Welcome to the Learning Lab. My name is Roman Garcia. What you're going to hear today is the first time that this idea, this concept, has been presented in a public forum. Now, I've been in the musculoskeletal um, medical uh, domain for about 16, 17 years now. And um, the key to understanding uh, joint problems, muscle problems, really uh, bodily function issues, is to see or observe and document as you practice your field. If you look close enough, what you'll start seeing or observing is certain patterns arising with each case that you see. The pattern builds up. You see it over and over again. So what I'm going to show you today is an observation, it's an insight that has been years in the making. And it's the first time, if you see this video, it will be the first time that you will hear this concept, this idea. And I've given it a name, what I'm about to show you. But the reason and how this observation came to be is that if you work in a musculoskeletal um, domain for long enough, you keep hearing the same symptoms, characteristics, over and over and over again. And most medical people don't put, put much mind into these uh, patterns, these characteristics that, the, that each individual patient shares with his health practitioner. But I do pay attention to it because sometimes they're very telling and they lead you into an insight that's never been uh, discovered or observed before. Now, what I, what I hear a lot with folks that come with knee problems especially if they come with problems in both knees, is that they usually um, come to the facility with a story. That story is quite typical in each patient that comes. They, they will tell you that, some, for example, uh, they, can, they can express their history in, in such a manner. They will, they will say that uh, a long time ago, I suffered, I started having pain on my left knee, but now my right knee hurts. Or the pain started on my right knee, it went away, but now my left knee is killing me. Or my left knee hurts more than the right, or both knees hurt the same. Now, the pattern, the characteristic pattern that is very common is that a patient will share with you their experience of pain in one knee that lessens as times go by, but increases in the other knee. So what I started doing is, is I started documenting those, um, those expressions, that, that history, and try to correlate it with x-ray or clinical examinations. And what I discovered is a pattern which can be visualized, visualized on x-ray. And I'm going to share that with you today. And what I call it, is the, um, a parrot fish deformity. Now, before I do that and I show you the x-ray so you can see how it will look, this parrot fish deformity, how it will look on an x-ray, I want you to be acquainted with what a parrot, fi parrot fish is. Why the idea of parrot fish came to my mind when I was thinking of what I was seeing on the x-ray, I really do not know why. But it is very characteristic physically the beak of a parrotfish with what you are about to see on an x-ray. But I want to show you first what a parrotfish is. I believe the parrotfish is a fish that's indigenous to Florida. It's a very colorful fish that has a lip that sh that's resembles that of a parrot. And I want to show you what a parrotfish looks like so you can appreciate the beak of this parrotfish. So, Carlos, if you can come over here so you can see. Try and focus in on this picture. Do you got it? This is a parrotfish. It's a very unusual fish because the mouth is, the material is most likely the same material as would a parrot have as its beak. And you can see the fish. It's a colorful fish, but it's the beak that's the key here. I want you to observe what this beak looks like. You can see it's kind of like a kind of like triangular. It's kind of like tri it's a it's a right angle. 
it's a right, it's basically like a pyramid. It's a pyramid set on one side. You can see the lines right here, very smooth lines right here that make up the mouth of the fish. And this is why it's called a parrot fish because the beak is very similar to what you would see on a parrot fish. And this formation is what I want you to take away from this picture. Remember how this looks. And I'm going to show you X-ray's example of parrotfish deformity. This is what we labeled it. This is the term that we use. It's a parrotfish deformity. And I'm going to show you. You can come to me now, Carl. No, and I'm going to show you what a parrotfish deformity looks like on an X-ray and what it means when you are talking about joint damage, joint tissue damage, joint damage. What it actually means when you see a parrotfish deformity on an x-ray and why it is so important to identify this deformity whenever a medical practitioner is examining a patient and then examining the x-rays. Because by, uh, by, by observing and identifying this parrotfish deformity, it tells the, the medical practitioner which joint has been under a degenerative strain for a longer period of time. So when you develop a protocol, a joint protocol for, of this patient, you would take into consideration the time variable involved in which joint was more involved initially because that would be your primary need that you would focus your attention to if you had two joints that were under, uh, under, um, under a degenerative strain. The joint that has the parrotfish deformity is the joint that has been in a degenerative state for a longer period of time. Though the patient may experience pain more on the other knee that's been under a degenerative strain for a lesser period of time for the simple reason is that the mind, the brain, takes weight off the joint that's been under longer periods of strain and brings it over to the other knee. So if you are a medical practitioner and you are concentrating on the joint that has the more symptoms and neglecting the other, you're not doing any favors to this patient because you are neglecting the joint that's, on, that's been under duress for a longer period of time. So I want to show you now some examples of this parrot fish deformity on how it would look like on an x-ray. I'm going to start first on a joint that does not demonstrate a parrot fish deformity. This is, I'm gonna shoot, this is a joint, this is a joint, this is a right knee x-ray. This is a right knee x-ray. This is a right knee x-ray. This is typical degenerative changes in a knee joint. You can see this is the inside, this is the outside part of the knee. This is the right knee. You can see right here, this is, what we, this is what is called the tibial plateau. You can see that there's evidence of degenerative changes in this knee. You look at it and the actual overall structure of the knee looks relatively normal, aside from the degenerative changes that you see. Joint space width narrowing, you see this little osteophyte formation over here. This is, this is something that, this is a structural characteristics that would be normal in a knee. This is the outside part over here. There's also degeneration over here. This is not a parrotfish deformity. This is a typical, typical characteristic of degeneration in a joint. Now, this is the left knee of this patient. This patient, when, they, when she came to us, she was complaining the typical characteristics of the history. She was, she was reporting pain initially on the left knee, which was this one which as time went by, decreased, and then it started experiencing pain on the right, which then overtook pain on the left knee. But because of this understanding of what a parrotfish deformity looks like, that I, I, we, we understood that it was the left knee that needed the primar primary attention to, in order to, for her to resolve the problem at a faster rate on both knees. If we would have just gone by the symptoms and how it looked 
uh, clinically to the examination, we would not have known that it was the left knee that's been under greater degenerative duress than the right knee is. The left knee is the knee that had the parrotfish deformity, and I'm going to show it to you now. Look, uh, this is the left knee right here. Remember what the parrot, what the parrotfish beak looked like. And here you see the parrotfish deformity right over here. It looks alike like the lower lip of that parrotfish beak. Look, I'm going to show you the right one again. This is the right one. You see this little concavity right over here. You see these sharp angles right here. It goes up like this, goes up like this, and then you see this concavity right here and then you have the osteophyte formation right here. This is typical degenerative changes, but this tibial plateau is relatively normal. Now, look at this left knee, the one that initially had where the pain started years earlier. Look how the tibial plateau is. Look, there's no concavity here. It's a straight linear angled line, straight up, straight up with a very small tibial plateau. This tibial plateau is actually atrophied on her. Again, it looks like the lower beak of the parrot fish. Thus, this is the label we called it. We called it the parrot fish deformity. This is the left. This knee was under greater duress for longer periods of time than was the right knee. The right knee looks like it has more degenerative changes because it's been her primary weight-bearing leg ever since the left knee developed degenerative changes in it, which then her mind, for getting from point A to point B, she was spending more time on the right knee. Her right knee was her primary weight-bearing leg, which eventually developed substantial amounts of inflammation, which leads to the symptoms. But if we were to neglect this left knee, then we would not be dealing with the problem at its most basic level, which was the left knee is the knee that needed the majority of the attention, and which is exactly what we did. Now I'm going to show you other cases here. Again, this is another case here. Again, you see the typical, this is a parafish deformity at its initial formation. This is the right, this is the left. Again, same story. Pain on the right knee started first, then it went over to the left. A lesson on the right increased on the left. Again, look at the differences here. You see this concavity right here. See this concavity. Again, the tibial tibial plateau is relatively normal. It's sclerotic, but it's relatively normal. Again, you see degenerative changes throughout the knee. This knee is very arthritic, but now you go on to the right knee and you lose this concavity. You lose this concavity. It has this very straight angle right here. Again, if you look at the tibial plateaus, the tibial plateaus are of different dimensions. Again, this right knee is started, has started forming a parrotfish deformity. This is the knee that's been under longer duress. So this is the knee that we emphasize, even though she has her symptoms on her left. Again, what we see here, again, this is an example of two knees that are not demonstrating parrotfish deformity. Though you can argue that this left, this right one right here is starting to develop it. Again, look at the, look at this angulation right over here. Looks almost the same, but you're starting to develop a little bit of atrophy of this tibial, medial tibial plateau. This is right, this is left. Just by observing for the parrotfish deformity, the examiner can get an idea of which knee also is incurring a increased, de is in an increased degenerative rate by just observing for that parrotfish deformity. Again, you see here, these are cases, two tibial plateaus, relatively normal. But you see here on this left one over here, 
the formation of the parrotfish deform deformity versus this one right over here. This is just beginning. This is, this is a very subtle example. Okay? And now, again, you see it here. Parrotfish deformity on both knees. The tibial plateaus are starting to lose that concavity here. It, this is happening in both knees. So again, you know that these knees are under tremendous amounts of strain because they're developing this parrotfish deformity. And again, two knees here, typical degenerative changes. You still see the concavity here. So these knees right here, these tibial plateaus right here, are not developing the parrotfish deformity. The, the, these, these plateaus are still relatively normal, even though they have tremendous amounts of degenerative changes, especially on the right one. Again, and then classic. Two knees with two parrot fish deformities. Again, they've lost a concavity over here, and it's starting to look like that beak from that fish. The medial plateaus are atrophying on this patient. Again, two knees, two parrot fish deformities, a case where immediate attention needs to be brought to bear onto these knees because this patient has gone past the typical characteristic degenerative changes in the knee. So again, just by identifying this parrotfish deformity on the inside part of the knees, which is, which is where it always formed, the practitioner can get a very good idea how far along these degenerative changes have existed in the knee and how, how important it is to create a protocol so as to reverse or to reduce the degenerative rate in these knees because time is of the issue whenever you see this parrot fish deformity. So what I'm going to do now with the help from my assistant Anna is I'm going to show you what a parrot fish deformity would look like on a, on a knee. So what I'm going to have Anna do is she's going to sit right over there. Anna, you can, le puede decir hello al público. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. So now, when, this, is what I'm, this is how it's going to look. Can you get it right there, Carlos? I'm showing you just for simplicity's purposes how different uh, the parrotfish deformity would look like if you compare how it would look like in an organic uh, example here, such as the knee. Now, what I drew here is how, how a typical tibial plateau looks like. It would have a very large surface area underneath the surface itself. It's kind of, it will go like this with a concavity right here and then it'll and then it'll migrate towards the surface itself. This is the surface right over here. This concavity is the key. When the person loses this concavity, they're starting to form this parrot fish deformity, which would look something like this. Again, it would look like the bottom beak of the parrot fish. They would lose this concavity right over here. So let's say that Anna would have come to me with two surfaces that I needed to evaluate. One of, the, one of the particular keys observations that I will be looking for is for any type of parrotfish deformity, in, especially in, on the inner side of the knee. So if Anna were to come to me and, if Anna were to come to me and she would present with pain in both knees, pain in both knees, pain in both knees, and I was evaluating her clinically and with x-rays, and she would present to me with a right knee that looked like this on an x-ray versus a left knee that had a shape such as this on the x-ray, even though Anna would tell me that she had greater pain on the right, I would put more relevance to the importance of the case by observing the shape of the tibial plateau. 
if they presented the left knee with the parrot fish deformity, I would concentrate more resources on the left knee than I would on the right. And I will always be monitoring for the shape of this tibial plateau. So, in essence, again, the reason that I, I, I thought that this issue was important is because in order to really deal with joint problems, knee problems, the, the investigator, the practitioner, really has to dig deep and look for clues that can lead him so he can truly understand what is going on insofar as how aggressive the degenerative condition is when you're evaluating one knee from the other. You need to understand the subtleties of each case. And sometimes these subtleties are, can only be deciphered by observing patterns that are established with each patient as they come in and then collating all the data. So you can create a biological model that tells the examiner how involved the quality and the quality, quantity of the degeneration that the practitioner is dealing with. But you need to have very deep insight into the biology of the tissues. And joints, soft tissue, the human body, is always gives out signs whenever it's under a disease condition or it's under duress. It's just having the ability to read those signs that gives the edge to the practitioner, which is in essence the idea the service, the products that we offer to our public and our client and our, and our, and our patients. We, 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 like act, we like to say that what we do is we offer a service that makes us, in essence, joint coaches. Because that's what somebody needs whenever they are experiencing a joint problem. They need somebody that supervises their actions at home. And in order for that to happen, you need the right equipment, but more importantly, you need massive amounts of information that can just not be given to you in one page of written words. It is, it is an interaction. It is a relationship between the patient, the client, and the practitioner. And it is a time-dependent relationship. So basically what we like to say about ourselves and the service that we offer is that we act as joint coach. We're always there for you because the moment that you learn everything that we need, we need to have you learn, there are always questions that follow because life is a very dynamic, um, it's a very dynamic experience where there's always new questions, new situations that arise in the patient's life. So what we like to consider ourselves are as, and the service that we offer is that we want to be your joint coach. And in order for us to help you, all you need to do is just contact us. There's always contact information on our videos. And if you have any questions about the services we offer, you just contact us, email me, call me on my, on my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm always available. And we can start the process of being your joint coach. So for anybody who sees this video, if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. And until next time, Anna and I say goodbye until Bye. next time.